Hi folks, in this video we're going to be looking at painting the cream cloth as seen on the Stone Guard Veterans tabard, just like you see on the box art of the miniatures. So, without any further ado, let's cue the music. To start out with, we are going to be applying a base coat of Carrick Stone from Games Workshop. And with this technique, we are going to start with the mid-tone, work our way down to the shadows, and then layer up a highlight as needed. And with this paint, I thinned it down about 50-50 with water. We hear the idea that we're going to be getting a nice smooth finish in two to three thin coats. And there's no real secret to this. We're trying to be as neat as possible, but if you make any mistakes onto the previously painted blue armor, uh, wait for it to dry and then come back in with your McCrag blue and touch up any mistakes that you've made. Or you could wait till the end when you've painted in all your highlights and shadows. And here we have the tabard once the Carrick stone has dried. I believe it took me three thin layers to get an all over smooth consistency on this cloth. For the next step, we're going to be adding our first shadow tone onto the cloth. And for this, I'm using Iroko from scale 75, but the Games Workshop equivalent here would be Zandri Dust. And so what I'm doing here is I'm thinning this down a little bit more than I would normally to do a layer. And I am using this thin down paint to block in all the areas that I would think would be in shadow. So I'm working on the idea that uh, light is hitting the miniature from the top. So any of the areas where there's folds or bits of the model are going to be cast into shadow, I'm going to be taking this thin down paint and blocking in those areas. Once I'm happy, whilst the paint is wet, that I've blocked in the area enough, I'm going to rinse off my brush and just using the wet brush, uh, feather out the edge so that the transition between the two colors is not harsh. And the trick with this is to keep it not thin enough that you're going to be a wash, but thin enough that you're going to have a bit more chunkiness to the paint than a glaze consistency. We're looking to softly adjust the shadow color in with this. And you can do this onto the flat surface if you want. We can come back and neaten up with the Carrick Stone later. So I wouldn't panic about being perfectly neat with this first soft shade pass. And this is entirely done to taste, so I would recommend doing a little bit and feathering it out, waiting for it to dry, doing a little bit more until you get a colour that's what you're after when it comes to the deepening and the increase in the saturation of this cloth. Because this is what this colour is doing. We're increasing that richness and saturation of colour rather than adding a pure dark shadow into it at this point. For our final shadow colour, I am heavily thinning down some Steel Legion Drab from Games Workshop. And we're going to be a lot more focused with this colour, and this is almost going to be a recess shade that we are going to be feathering out with a wet brush. This paint has been thinned down almost to what you might consider a wash consistency, but the difference with using a matte paint rather than a wash is that you have a lot more control over how the paint flows, where lots of washes tend to run very quickly off the brush and often stain flat surfaces that you don't want to. Uh, thinning this down this way and with a fine tip brush very carefully uh, running this into all the deepest uh, nooks, crannies, crevices and anything that will be cast into our deepest shadows gives a lot more of a realistic finish. It's a lot more subtle in its shading and we have to do a lot less clean up than we would if we were to slap a contrast paint or a wash paint, even heavily thinned down over this. And just like in the previous soft shade with our Iroko or our Zendry Dust color, uh, we're going to be running this into the recess and then whilst it's wet, quickly rinse off our brush and come back in with a damp brush and uh, run it backwards and forwards to soften out the edges so that this sits exactly where we want it to and if we go a little bit overboard we can soften that out into the 
uh, medium tan color that we had applied previously. So we get that nice transition of this cream cloth with realistic shadow tones into our nice creamy tan color. There's no real trick to this. It's all about taking your time, uh, focusing on your brush control, running the paint where you want to and realizing that while it's wet, you can rinse off your brush and correct any mistakes that you make. You can even completely get rid of the paint that you added if it's still wet whilst you're doing this step very quickly. If you're struggling with the brush being rinsed off quickly, you can use this with a second brush, uh, but usually you should be fine if you keep it viscous enough as a paint, but thin enough that it's gonna flow nicely. Uh, you shouldn't have too much trouble doing this with just the one brush. And here's our tabard cloth one saw that steel legion drab has been run nicely into all of our recesses. As you can see that this cloth is really starting to take shape. Our next step is one that is mostly tidying up. And for this, I'm coming back in with Carrick Stone from Games Workshop, and I'm re-layering up all the raised areas and flat surfaces on this cloth to neaten up anywhere where I may have overspilled with my previous two shade colors. I won't linger around too long on footage with this, as this is exactly like playing, like applying a base coat. It's just a matter of neatening up and tidying up any mistakes we might have made in our previous steps and regaining that lighter Carrick Stone color onto our main area to show that this is the main color of the cloth. And here is that cloth after the Carrick Stone has been reapplied to give us our mid-tone back. And it's starting to look really good at this point. For the first highlight onto this cloth, I'm using a 50-50 mix of Carrick Stone and Ushabti Bone, both from Games Workshop. And with this paint, I've thinned it down with a little bit of water and I am starting to paint in the raised areas of folds in the cloth, uh, edges of the cloth and areas that would catch the light. And what I'm doing here is I've thinned this down a little bit than normal and I'm doing more than a chunky highlight. I'm actually starting to paint out onto the flat area. And once I've got the paint onto the flat area, just like with our soft shades on our shadows, I'm coming in with a clean wet brush and pushing back that pigment so that I get a nice transition between the edge of the cloth and the flat of the cloth. And I will look to build this up over a few layers as I've kept this quite thin. And I'll be looking at working at an area at a time, moving on to the next one. And as you can see with these folds, uh, I'm being quite sketchy with the brush motions, uh, focusing on uh, lines and directional movement of the brush, often pushing downwards. So anything that is going to get caught by the light is going to be those hard edges. Uh, anything that's towards the top of the model that's prominent is going to get hit. If there's a curved fold edge, that is going to look at how that reflex is going to hit. And as the sun is coming down on a more of a 45 degree angle on our model, we are going to be looking at making sure that we deal with this as a that bottom edge is going to get hit as well. That bottom area, that middle bit is kind of going to sit more in our neutral mid-tone and I'm going to push for those highlights. And don't forget, you can wiggle the miniature around in the base to get the best directional and try to use the edge of your brush where you can. If you're confident using the tip to draw in a fine line, brilliant. Uh, if not, like I'm doing here at this corner here, um, I'm getting sort of that chunky corner painted in and then I'm going to use a wet brush to sort of feather it out till I get the effect that I am looking for. For the last highlight, I have added in some white into the mix. In this case, I'm using Viejo model color white, but you can use whatever your favorite white happens to be. And so this is looking at roughly one third Carrick Stone, one third Ushabti Bone, and one third your favorite white. And with this, I'm focusing on a pure edge highlight here. 
I'm focusing all the sharpest edges like the side of this fold in the cloth here and the ridges in the middle folds as the belt buckle goes across it. Uh, if you're feeling really confident, you can also apply a few dots and scratches with a very small fine tip brush onto some of the flatter areas to try and give the impression of texture. But if you're not confident in that, I would just work on focusing on these edge highlights. Now this color is a very subtle difference and that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for an edge highlight that causes everything to pop out we're using it as a final extremis and natural progression of this color, which is why we are making this a three part mix rather than going into a bright, almost white highlight with this. And this is one of those highlights that you often find that less is more on it. And then a lot of it comes down to personal taste. So I would do a little bit, put them into one side, come back, have a look, see what you think to it. Uh, focus on those sharpest edges and corners, making sure that you're still keeping that carrot stone and your last highlight is still very prominent and that this is just where sunlight is most catching the model or where it's going to receive wear and tear in the folds as it's uh, been moved about. And with that, the cream cloth on this Ultramarine Stone Guard Veteran is now complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, if you've made it all the way to the end. And I hope that it's given you some insights on different ways of painting cream cloth. I know there are a million more tutorials out there. And this is based almost exactly to the recipe that the heavy metal team use at Games Workshop. This is a really interesting study, painting this miniature. And it's interesting to paint something like the box art. And even if you don't normally do that, I do recommend giving it a go as it really is a nice little exercise in brush control and understanding more volumetric highlighting than you might initially think about. So uh, why not consider subscribing if you'd like to all this lot and I will see you in the next one, folks.